let's talk about stuffing it. Hey, listen, we got the diagnosis, we accessed it, we've got a smooth reproducible slide path, glide path facilitates shaping, and now we got disinfection, let's talk about filling root canal systems. This is a 30-year recall. Notice the terminal abutment in the most venereal sense is the maxillary first molar without its palatal root. So it's gone through endoperial pros with a palatal root resection. Ruddell never knew within the anastomosing between the MB and the ML, we never knew that there was another whole system had its own linear length and that puff is at the end of that third POE. So we need forgiveness and Ruddell's off course 99% of the time when I'm doing endodontics. And so it's the reagents that make us all more than we were. And so to the extent we can get these reagents moving into these inaccessible areas that I've been speaking about continuously, we have an opportunity with warm gutta percha and sealer to fill in three dimensions. So of course we can't even have discussions about filling a root canal system until we have the shape. And I keep bringing you back to the shape because the shape facilitates the cleaning and the shape facilitates the three-dimensional filling of root canal systems. So in this obturated animation, <laughs> don't we wish they all look like this? It begins though to give us an appreciation for possibility and how you communicate is how it is. And if you're thinking canals, you're treating canals. And if you're thinking systems, you're approaching the game in a very different way. So there's a lot of ideas out there, aren't there? And even in the large group that I might be speaking to on this web event, you would all have your ways of filling a root canal system, I'm sure. But let's talk about the ones that are the most predictable, and that would be the third and fourth bullet, vertical compaction, the classic shoulder technique, and carrier-based obturation. Here we go. Well, in a vertical compaction concept, we're gonna fit a cone, like you learned. We're gonna need a heating device, and the calamus unit has the electric heat pluggers that can be selected and with the finger on the blue activating cuff, we can bring heat down almost instantaneous to the distal end of the instrument. And so that is our heater. However, we have the other side of that unit, which we have the squirter. We call it squirting affectionately, but it's a way to dispense thermal softened gutta percha into the various regions of the root canal space. Warm gutta percha has compaction potential and warm gutta percha can be moved wall to wall laterally so our sealer is a thin microfilm on the order of about six, seven, eight microns. Okay, so if we look at this tooth that you're a little bit familiar with, we're gonna remove the crown. Okay, that's another lecture at another time but we can remove a lot of fixed dentistry and that has some real advantages. Look at the tooth, begin to see the pack on the preoperative film. You know, in the 50s, Jack Nicholas wrote that book. Remember that book? Uh, it was on seeing the perfect flight of the ball, its true trajectory, and seeing the ball up on the green, high, white, and purdy. Hell, I refer all my golf. <laughs> I don't do any golf, but I got the message endodontically. It's look at those preoperative images and begin to imagine and see the flow of your obturation material, and you'll approach the game a little differently. So if we zoom in here and look at a finished shape and disinfected system, we would fit a cone in the shoulder technique. The cone should slide to length. It should be confirmed radiographically. It's our last chance to make adjustments. Remember, we're off course continuously, and it's all those little adjustments that allow us to be successful. Notice the heat wave. Notice it moving through the cone to the terminus. And of course, warm gutta percha can be compacted. And here we are with a pre-selected, pre-fit plugger moving GP and sealer into the anatomy, corking the apical one-third. And of course, when we cork the apical one-third, we would normally never put post in the mesial systems, right? Well, we usually would then need to backfill. So in the vernacular, we speak of downpacking and backpacking, and now I'll show you a little glimpse of the calamus flow, injecting a little bit of thermal softened gutta percha, but it should be done incrementally so that we can manage shrinkage. If you load a material during its cooling cycle, it completely offsets shrinkage and there is no shrinkage in a warm gutta percha technique if you keep a load on the cooling material. So you clean up the pulp chamber and at this point I would rely heavily on my dear friends, the general dentist who set the table 
And in fact, we'd want to send this case back to them in a way that makes it easy to manage the rest of the seal, as my friend Denny Southerd says, and that means the coronal restorative. Well, there's other ideas, aren't there? And this would be a, a very simple pack that we've uh, seen. You've probably seen this case before, nothing dramatic here, but this is an example of the classic shoulder. Down packing to within about five millimeters of the terminus, then back packing, managing the coronal seal. But let's look at some new ideas. I would like to ask you how many of you are using a carrier-based obturation system to fill root canal systems? Surprisingly, many. And I'm an endodontist that embraces this concept. I didn't always, I must be honest, and I've had to apologize internationally. Now, Ruddle's enrolled. Why? Science, evidence, and a cascade of histological uh, evidence that really begin to make me rethink uh, the carrier-based idea. So I've been teaching carrier-based obturation now for a few years in all my classes that I offer in Santa Barbara, California. But what I'd like to say is there's a new kid on the block and the carrier-based obturation, there was always a little stigma among endodontists of leaving a carrier behind. Let's look at another idea. And that new idea then would be to have not a polysulfone carrier or a polymer or a plastic with alpha gut aperture around it, it would be a different way to manage this system so we can be more effective in our seal. Giuseppe Cantatori has been one of the pioneers, Ben Johnson, Steve Nimzik, Bill Henson, these guys have done tens of thousands of cases and I've learned a lot from them on this way of obturation. But I want to talk to you then about gutta core. Gutta core has replaced the stigma of the polysulfone plastic carrier. And so now we have a material called gutta percha. You've heard that material, but it's just a different formulation and that is now the core. But you can read the advantages, but we can have a wall-to-wall -wall gutta percha. Isn't that cool? We can have a post space created much, much easier than in the past when we had a non-soluble, non uh, heat sensitive material, we'd have to sometimes worry about that post space and there was drills to help us do this, but now everything has gotten a lot easier. So especially in retreatment, the endodontist now can't really complain a lot because these readily are removable if you just have a couple ideas. Now let's take a look at how it might work. If you use your last shaping file to length, whatever system you're using, you would select the carrier-based gutta core that had the same terminal diameter. So if the tip of your shaping file was a 20 as an example, we would like to use a size verifier that's a 20, and we need to carry that size verifier to length, and it needs to be loose at length. If it's loose at length, then that pronosticates which gutta core carrier you're actually going to select. So let's bring the gutta core player in play so Cliff can talk about it. Where is it? Well, it will arrive shortly. Aha! It was almost late to the party. This gutta core carrier then has the same D0 dimensions as the last file. That would be the core itself and we need to adjust the stop on this so that it matches the last shaping file that was carried to length and corresponds equally to the size verifier. So the stop would come down and now you have everything correctly set. I'd like to bring your attention to the oven and you can bring these things out of an oven. There's different selected temperatures that introduce more time to thermal soften the bigger ones but we can bring the thermal soft and gutta core carrier in in a very slow but progressive continuous movement we can deliver it to length. Two or three seconds in a continuous motion. You'll notice as you slide this to length in the animation you could see how systems are filled in real time. Of course we can do this with micro CTs and there's a lot of histological evidence that would show this even probably more effectively than a simple animation. Well, in the old days, some of these handles were a little bit more difficult to remove. I'm just kidding, they weren't. You just made it difficult.
But in the old carriers, the plastic ones, we could use ultrasonics, we could use a heat carrier or burr, and we could just cut them off at the desired level. Gutta core has even other advantages. In fact, one of the things I really like about gutta core is we can simply rock the handle, buckle lingual, and the gutta percha core will separate and out comes the handle. Now, if you have uh, a narrow interocclusal space, as an example, and you might not have the freedom for rocking, obviously you can use a small size round burr. I would like you to use a surgical link that can reach down in there, give you a line of sight, and you can cut that thing off, usually about the level of the orifice. Okay, so we've talked about the importance of all the procedural steps that comprise start to finish endodontics. And I want to bring your attention to this case. Uh, about 91% of my practice is retreatment. And in retreatment, I've really actually learned to love it because I've learned a lot about failures through retreating cases. And, you know, when things go well, we don't learn so much, next case please. But when something doesn't work, it oftentimes provokes thoughtful reflection. Like this case. This is like about a $25,000 quadrant and the endodontics is failing on the palatal root. So the pier abutment had the buccal roots resected. And notice the gutta percha is going up to about the junction of the middle and the apical one-third. This is not endodontics. This was done for a laugh. You can't put prosthesis on under-treated endodontic teeth and hope things are going to work. You know, hope is a great religious concept, but it shouldn't even exist in your operatory. We need to work on getting this splint off. We need to think about, can we get out that gutta percha? Usually apical to the gutta percha, there'll probably be a block canal. That's anticipated, maybe a ledge. One visit to disassemble the tooth, the second visit to shape the canal, and this was the thrill of the fill. Listen, I bring you good news. I don't have any special hands. I don't have a ownership on the technology. We all have the same books, the same magazines, the DVDs, the courses. We keep working at our game, but when we can do complete endodontics, properly performed, endodontics is the cornerstone of restorative and reconstructive dentistry. Thank you very much.